Yes. Welcome to the Fall 2013 Student Presidential Debate. Our candidates are Riley Swenson of the Populist Party, Cam Holmes of the Liberty Party, Bailey Quambeck of the Freedom Party, and Kaylin Smith of the Reform Party. The debate will start with an opening statement. Riley, you can give your opening statement first. Hi, I'm Riley Swenson. I want to be your 2013 fall president. Um, I think I'm more qualified than either one of these three individuals. Uh, you know, I've really been working hard for this. Uh, I've planned on doing this for most of the year. Uh, I did a program last summer called American Legion Boy State, and you spend a week learning about how elections and politics work. So um, I really think that was a good a good way to get me to know what I'm doing up here, so vote for me. Thank you. Cam, you can go next. Hi, I'm Cam Holmes, and I want to be the next president of the fall 2013, and I think I'm the best choice, so vote for me, and yes, we can. Very good. Bailey. I'm Bailey Kwambeck of the Freedom Party. I'm running to be Brandon Valley president because I can communicate and understand the students at our school. I've built friendships with many of you through extracurricular activities and classes. My vice president, AJ Garrow, and I have made efforts to get to know you, the students, and we will make a difference in this school. What's best for you? Vote for BQ. Very good. And Kayla. I'll make it sweet and short, but my fellow students, um, um, Abraham Lincoln once said, whatever you are, be a good one. Vote for Kaylin Smith, and I promise to be the greatest president I can be. Thank you. Yeah, very good. Now, for this next point, you don't have to stand up for each question now. Um, <clears throat> these questions are individual. Sometimes we'll do questions that are to all of you, but these are going to be specific. And Riley, let's start with you. In your stump speech, you claim that Kaylin will cut consumer math and implied English. Yet, Kaylin's platform does not state either of these things. Uh, nor has she ever stated herself that she would cut those classes. How do you defend those dishonest statements made by you? And why should voters trust anything you say if these statements are not true? Um, these are all assumptions built upon her platform due to uh, her wanting to add more AP classes and college course classes. Um, the fact that she wants to add more high level classes and throughout her platform supports that she wants to build up the higher academic level throughout all classes and this the school body in general. Uh, really kind of through context clues you kind of realize that she wants to wean out the lower level classes. So I did make an assumption on that. So you're making these assumptions. Uh, are there any some other assumptions that you can make about any of these other candidates that you want to put out there right now? Uh, not necessarily. This is just one of the main assumptions that I picked up along the way. OK. Kaylin, in your campaign, you claim that CAM wants to bomb schools and links CAM to one of, the, one of our enemies, Iran. What proof do you have to support this claim? Um, in Cam's platform, he said that to raise money, he wanted to sell nuclear weapons to, um, to not our allies, but to other people. But those can obviously get misplaced and can obviously go into different directions. So by saying that it can get into other hands of like Iran, that's why I kind of assume that as well. Okay, so you could tie Iran saying that even though he sold them to allies, that maybe uh, Iran could still get them. How about bombing schools? Well, obviously nuclear weapons. Um, you link those things with like bombings and, and nuclear explosions, so that's why I said schools, because he also wants to build up a new school, so I don't know any other way he would do it. Do you think Cam actually supports bombing schools? Um, he didn't say he did it. Okay. So to be clear, we can assume things that other people just assume things about other candidates, according to Riley, and if someone doesn't say they don't support something, we can assume that they do. <clears throat> Is that a fair statement, you think, in elections? Um, I, I suppose if you don't make it clear, then it's hard to understand, so yeah. Okay, very good. Bailey, in one of your commercials, you claim that Riley doesn't care about freshmen. 
the quote was obviously taken completely out of context. How do you respond to those who claim that you are spreading false information in this election? I do believe that the reason we used that quote was because it was something that Riley said. We didn't edit that video to take away or add words to what he had already stated. And so we are trying to inform our voters. And um, yes, he said it at another point. He didn't say it specifically for this election, but it is something that he has stated in the past. OK, Riley, what were you talking about when you were mentioning that uh, the statement about freshmen? Uh, Keller Land News came in and decided to interview me about texting, the new texting school program, uh, how we can have phones in classes and, uh, well, not necessarily in classes, but in the hallways and in between classes. And uh, I did make an accusation that freshmen, although along with sophomores, juniors, and even seniors, um, you know, it's a little harder to walk in the halls when people are, you know, staring down at your phones and not really looking where they're going. So it's not only the freshmen, it's every grade. But Bailey's comment then is accurate. It is accurate. I did make that statement. OK. Cam, in your commercial, you accuse Riley of discrimination, which is a horrible accusation. Uh, you said he's, he discriminates because he wants to enforce border control laws. Currently, the Border Patrol are following those same laws. What is your definition of discrimination? And does that mean that all Border Patrol agents right now are discriminating? Well, I think Riley wants to uh, enforce tighter uh, national borders. And I think he has a certain uh, dislike for people who aren't American. And that's what we were trying to depict in our commercial. Aren't all immigration laws discriminating against those who want to emigrate to the country? Yes. So would you agree to then no limits on immigration that anybody wants to come to America then can come to America? No, I think the immigration laws we have in place right now are adequate and I think tightening them only leads to more uh, discrimination. But with that same definition then you too support discrimination because you support laws that would keep others from coming to our country. I support our current laws. I do not support adding new ones. OK. Um, second question. Riley, what experiences have you had that make you qualified to be president of the school? Um, very briefly, just like I said in my opening statement, um, I was selected to the school to go to uh, American Legion Boys State this summer. It's a week-long program in June, and you go with uh, a handful of kids from nearly every other school, uh, big or small, um, throughout the state. Uh, I met all sorts of all sorts of people that I I'm sure I would have never met. It was a, a gr really a great program for me, and um, its its primary focus is to teach individuals more about politics and elections. Uh, you learn how they run. You learn. Uh, you know, how people get elected and for what reasons. Um, and then you just learn how, you know, how to live out a term in whatever office. So we learned all about um, different, uh, you know, Supreme Court justices. We learned about senators, congressmen, uh, you know, uh, state representatives, you know, all the way up the, all the, way up the totem pole. So uh, I really think I, that really enlightened me on how politics work. Very good. Riley, or excuse me, uh, Kaylin, why do you think that you would make a better president than any of these opponents, any of your opponents? Um, <clears throat> I believe I'd make a better um, president in this campaign compared to any other um, of my opponents because I'm overall a, um, probably just a, a caring person and I, and I care about people's needs and and um, I share a lot of qualities and, and um, interests as other people. And like I'm in student council, and I, I try to I try to do that sort of leadership and stuff like that as well. But um, I think just overall, I'm a caring and passionate person compared to my other ca um, candidates. Very good, Bailey. Of all the ideas that you list on your platform, 
Which do you feel is the best? Which is the one that would have the highest priority uh, if you were elected president? I think one of our strongest ideas is having open gym twice a week during team because we are still giving students an opportunity to read three times throughout the week. And in addition to this, we are promoting fitness because currently you are only required to have one semester of gym. And so a lot of students, if they're not in sports, if they are in other extracurriculars like fine arts, they aren't given the, as many opportunities to participate in gym. And so this would both promote fitness while still allowing us to read during team. Very good. And Cam, what specific skills or talents do you have that would, that would be useful as president? And how would you utilize those skills uh, in your presidency? Well, I think I have very good uh, leadership qualities. I'm the student council president. Um, I've been in numerous groups and organizations that have helped me improve these leadership qualities. And I think I'm a nice, caring guy, and I could lead the school. Very good. All right, we are to the point of the debate where the candidates will ask questions to each other. We will start with Kaylin. You have the first question you can ask to any one of your opponents. All right, this question is for Cam. So um, statistics show that the minimum cost for an indoor pool is $100,000. Where are you going to have the water polo team? Right? Um, where will you come up with the money to build and rent the pool out, as also with the money for the, um, for the lifeguards? And do you also know that you have the liability um, that someone might drown? And yeah, that's all. Well, uh, as stated in the platform, we're going to hold various sports tournaments, such as dodgeball, pickleball, uh, et cetera, to raise money for the school. Do you want to follow up on that, Kayla? Well, um, what about the other costs of like the lifeguard as well and then the liability of a student's death? Uh, I think the, the tournaments will cover uh, every cost. I expect a high attendance at these because they'll be very competitive. And the liability is just something we'll have built in. Okay. Bailey, you may ask a question. Riley, you are in favor of students paying to retrieve their confiscated phones from the office. Some lower income students who are saving for their futures cannot afford to pay this fee, whereas other students may not be phased by the fees and would not feel the need to hide their cellular devices. How is your proposed system fair, and how is this a better option than the current system? Um, I think this would very well benefit the school uh, financially. Um, those who think that they can just go around and text in class, which I don't, I don't agree should happen. Uh, I think a classroom is a place to learn. I don't think you should be texting in class. Uh, I do support the texting in the hallways, texting during lunch, etc. Um, I think that's, a, that's perfectly okay. Um, however, I think that if you get your phone taken away and you pay a small fee to get it back, um, not only would that give students an opportunity, you know, if you get your phone taken away on Friday, uh, in most cases, you don't get it back until Monday. Um, you know, this can really disrupt people's weekends. It can disrupt their personal lives, not having a way to uh, communicate with someone. Um, I don't think it really makes that much of a difference whether uh, people, uh, students live in a higher or lower income family. Um, I think either way, you still need to follow the rules. And I mean, if you're, if you're texting or doing things you aren't supposed to, I think you need to, need to pay the price for it and you need to do your time, I guess you could say. So you feel you should do the time? I, I'm sorry? D don't you offer bail for cell phones? Yes. I think that by, by saying that, that was more of a metaphor for, I think you should, you should, uh, I'm trying to think of the word, um, you need to, you need to do your punishment. You know, I mean, you shouldn't just get away with not having it, I think you should pay some money if you want it back early. Otherwise, you can just wait and get it back. You know, have a parent come in. But if some students don't want to get their parents involved or whatnot, then I think that'd be a great way to raise a school's income. Okay. Cam, you may ask a question. Uh, Bailey, uh, you say you want to unblock the school's Wi-Fi. Uh, doesn't this seem like it would give kids uh, more chance to be on their phones during class as well as have uh, some inappropriate things on their phone on the internet. 
Currently, many students in our school do have smartphones, and so they already have access to the internet and access to various sites. Also, for those people who don't have smartphones and don't have that access, they may use a tablet before or after school for educational purposes. And even if it is before or after school, students don't have access to the internet. And so this is something that we are hoping will expand students' knowledge, and also it isn't bringing anything up that hasn't already happened because there are so many students with internet access currently. Okay, Riley, you may ask a question. Uh, this question is also for Cam, uh, and also pertains to cost. Uh, Cam, I don't know if you quite understand how much a, a school costs, but it is uh, millions upon millions of dollars. Um, you say that you want to build a 10-story school. Um, even just a two-story school like ours is an unbelievable cost, and it took years and years of taxpayers' dollars to pay for it. Um, how do you plan to pay for a 10-story school? I mean, you say that you want uh, to sell nuclear weapons, but I don't think the school has nuclear weapons to sell. That's more of a national issue. And I, I mean, I'm not doubting the student body's ability to fundraise, However, I don't think our school has ever raised more than a few thousand dollars per fundraiser. I mean, you would have to have fundraisers every single day, all year for years and years and years to even make one million dollars. Um, I seriously doubt the financial capabilities of a 10-story school. Well, first off, uh, it's not the students paying for the school, it'd be the, the community. Second of all, uh, you can take out We'd be taking out loans from banks. We don't have to pay this, uh, the cost of the school uh, right off the top. So we'd be taking out loans and paying it off over uh, many years, as well as using uh, the tax base money, which already goes towards the school, to fund the new school. OK. Let's go with another question. We'll change the order here a little bit. Bailey, we'll give you the chance to ask the question first this time. Cam. You plan to add a field trip class to the school's class offerings. Most likely, the weekly field trips would be longer than one class period, cutting into the time of other classes. Not only does this affect the students by skipping crucial learning time, but it also puts extra pressure on the teachers, as they will have to teach the curriculum again to the students that are absent weekly. How do you plan to offer this class without it affecting the students' understanding and the teachers' lessons plans, especially in the core courses needed for college and further education? Uh, I think we could transition to lessons being either recorded uh, by, uh, with uh, a mic or with a camera. And the students that missed a class on the field trip day can go online and learn the lesson from the teacher. So it's just like they're in the classroom, but they'd be at home watching it on their computer or iPhone or iPad or anything. OK. Um, Riley, you may ask your second question. Um, this question is for Kay. Uh, on your platform, you want to bring in outside vendors, but how do you sp uh, expect to make up the money lost from our own school lunch program? Um, I mean, do you plan on firing the lunch ladies, or I mean, I'm not 100% sure on what you plan on doing, and how do you make these vendors match the national school lunch regulations on health standards? I mean, for example, if you brought in a McDonald's or a Taco Bell or something, I, I doubt that it matches the national school lunch standards for health. Um, first of all, the vendors will obviously be regulated by the um, school's health system as well as the cost and, and the um, limitations we can have on that for um, um, raising money for that search is all on my platform, which we've um, carefully looked at to see if it would be able to um, to benefit us in the long run. And I think it I think it overall will be helpful for the students so they don't have to waste money to go other places or to just have a um, an extra option other than just our school lunch. Very good. Uh, Kayla, you may ask a question. Bailey, in your platform to raise money for the school, you promote selling Girl Scout cookies in a, on an international level. Why would you promote selling Girl Scout cookies to Cuba, a communist country that the United States embargoed and other socialist nas nations that have um, had conflicts with the U.S. in the past? 
The reason we are making the move to sell Girl Scout cookies around the world is because there is a large market that we can take advantage of, like Europe, for instance. My parents lived in Italy for a few years, and when they were there, they had one box of Thin Mints that they had to ration. And that just goes to show that there are people around the world that will purchase these cookies. And it's important for us to use our resources and to sell to people who are potential customers. Because if we are only selling to people in our community, that limits our range. Whereas if we can sell around the world, that opens up new doors. Cam, your next question. All right, this question is for Kaylin. Uh, in your platform, you state that we should keep the lunchroom open all day. Uh, how would this uh, help the obesity problem? Um, well, just talking to seniors um, who don't have a lunch, I know that they would rather have the lunch open so just they can grab a quick cookie or an apple or something as such. But I don't think overall it would, um, it would be negative towards the, um, towards the fact that we, um, becoming obese or overweight or anything because it's just a quick snack for, for mostly seniors who don't have a lunch because I know that other students don't necessarily need to go <clears throat> to other places to get an extra snack throughout the day. Okay, I will give you an opportunity to ask another question here in a minute, but we also have some questions from some of the, the states. So I want to make sure that I get to these. Cam, this first question is from Mrs. Ruscello's class, uh, and it is for you specifically. Who are you planning on selling nuclear weapons to, and why? Uh, I plan on selling nuclear weapons because we haven't used them in over 80 years. And, I mean, the amount that we spent on our nuclear budget, which is $179 billion, is ridiculous. I think by selling nuclear missiles to our allies, not Iran, such as Canada, England, France, uh, Germany, Australia, uh, different countries like that, we could, I mean, it'd be a double whammy. We don't have to spend the money on making the nuclear missiles and maintaining them, and our allies uh, have a stronger defense. Okay, Kaylin, this one's from you, or for you. It's from Miss Main's class. And they asked, you plan on cutting class times, also early outs on Fridays, um, late starts on Mondays. Where will you make up the time in order to make, meet the legal requirements of a number of school hours per year? Um. Obviously, these, uh, the late start and the early release will just be a couple extra minutes, like 30 minutes or, or whatever it has to be. But um, maybe by going earlier, um, like uh, begins, begin school um, earlier in the summer and later, and end it later is a possibility. Otherwise, um, going longer days throughout the other days of the week. So either extending the school year or a longer school day as Correct. a whole? Yes. Okay, very good. Bailey, this is from Mrs. Or Mr. Pressler's state. Seeing that Brandon grads uh, go off to college with a lower uh, and do poorly on their tests in college, do you think it's time to reinstate semester tests for all? I believe that the current system we have is working well, especially with those uh, students who are preparing for college. There are many students who are taking Rising Scholar and AP classes, and in those classes, um, in Rising Scholar classes, semester tests are required, and in AP tests, you are required to take the AP test or you're preparing for an AP test. And so because of this, the students who really are preparing for college are getting that practice and getting that experience taking those tests. Also, for students who are concerned about their futures, semester tests are optional, and so you are given the option to get that experience. Okay. And Riley, the question is, why don't you support immigration? Shouldn't everybody get the same chance that your ancestors had? Um, I think that's a false accusation right off the bat. I definitely support immigration. Um, I, you know, I think it's great that we have multiple all cultures of, uh, from all around the world. I think that's what makes America the great country it is today. However, I think along with immigration, I think it needs to be done legally. Um, you know, if you go through the same process as, I mean, we have way more legal immigrants than illegal immigrants. Um, and they seem to do great in the country. Um, I just want everyone to do it the same way. I don't want uh, some immigrants cutting corners. 
um, you know, getting around the system. I don't think that's fair to the other immigrants or everyone else living in the United States. Okay. Back to your questions again. Now, this time, let's start with Cam. You may ask a question to one of your opponents. All right, this one's for Riley. Uh, in your platform, you state that you are pro-gun ownership. Why should we give guns to everybody, especially those unfit to own them? Um, I'm pro-gun ownership uh, in terms of the Second Amendment. Uh, I strongly support the Second Amendment being a lifetime hunter uh, and outdoorsman myself. Um, I think it's great for the national security, um, having individuals um, having the right to, to keep and bear arms. Um, however, I do not support just going out and, you know, to some sidewalk sale and just selling guns to every Randy that you see. Um, but I do think that it's important that uh, individuals should keep the right to bear arms. Very good. Bailey, you may ask your question. Kim. You want to add a rocket science class to our school's course offerings. This class would require very expensive equipment reaching into the millions of dollars to achieve even the smallest of hands-on experience. To participate in learning even the basics of rocket science, very advanced levels of prerequisite science is required that most high school students do not have and cannot achieve in four years of high school. How do you plan to maintain this class when the participation would be little and the costs would be high? I think the participation in this class would be immense. It sounds like a Inter very interesting class to many of our students here. And um, it wouldn't be a college level course, it would be a high school level course. So it's not like you'd need uh, uh, certain prerequis prerequisites to get into this class. And as far as equipment goes, uh, there wouldn't really be any equipment necessary. And if it was, we could tr uh, commute to a university or college that has the necessary equipment. Okay. Riley, you may ask your question. Uh, this question is for Kay again. Um, in your platform, you state that you want to add a culinary class. Um, however, as a sophomore, I took nutrition and wellness uh, with Ms. Poppy, um, and I learned a multitude of culinary skills. Uh, it's basically foods class, and uh, I just want to know what your plan is for this culinary class. How is it going to differentiate from the current foods class we have now? Um, are you going to need a teacher? Are you going to fire Ms. Poppy? Um, what are your plans? Um, the culinary class that we are adding is completely different from advanced foods because the culinary class is geared for preparing students to take, um, who are taking a career in professional cooking environments. Unlike advanced foods where you just cook mostly for yourself, you do learn um, various techniques that you do in culinary. However, it's more um, enhancing the fact for students to go into more of a business such as that. We wouldn't um, fire Mrs. Poppy or do anything like that. Um, it would just be an extra option other than advanced foods. Very good. And Kaylin, you may ask a question. Um, Kim, in your platform you have a sleep study class. Um, a survey stated that padded chairs cause kids to fall asleep during class. Are you promoting kids to fall asleep during class and how will you prevent this from happening? That is not what I'm promoting. I'm promoting a sleep study class which is basically uh, code word for nap class. I think a lot of kids are sleep deprived and I think a nap class, an optional class by the way, that you can sign up to take would uh, benefit anyone who takes it. And how are you um, preventing from falling asleep in other classes or being overtired? By napping in that class. I'm curious on this class, under which what kind of credit would you get for this class? Is this a social studies credit, science? Where, what kind of credit are we offering here? Uh, I think it could be a social studies class because those classes are just kind of all grouped together. <laughs> Aren't all the classes kind of grouped together? I'm not sure I follow that explanation. Like uh, psychology and government are both social studies classes and they're two obviously unrelated things. But why does sleep study fall within the social studies department? I'm just adding one more to the group. Okay. I'm not sure I you got an answer on that, but we'll move on. Uh, I have some questions I'm going to ask to all of you. So the same question, you all have an opportunity to, to answer this. Um, Kaylin, you'll be the first one to answer this particular question. Campaigns are oftentimes inaccurate. 
Are there any accusations or claims that have been made against you in this campaign by any of your opponents that you would like to take the time to respond to now? Um, the myth that I cannot rhyme is false because I can rhyme. Playin' and Kaylin do rhyme. They both have the ins at the end. And um, I think that's all. So you want to defend your rhyming ability? Okay. Very good. The same question again, Bailey. Has there been, have there been any accusations or claims against you by any of your opponents that you would like to respond to? Yes, there have been claims that um, the Freedom Party is supporting obesity because we are supposedly cutting fruits and vegetables. And this is a false claim because in actuality, we are keeping the same amounts of fruits and vegetables we have already had. The thing we are changing is the waste. On average in schools, 40% of the fruits are thrown away and 44% of the vegetables are thrown away. We have a requirement to put food on the trays, but it doesn't necessarily end up in the stomachs. So a lot of students just move fruits and vegetables from the cafeteria to the trash bins. So with our change, we are taking away the requirement. You can still eat just as many fruits and vegetables as you always have, and we don't foresee students to change their eating habits because of that. The only thing we are cutting back on is the waste in America. Very good. Cam, same question to you. Is there anything that you would like to address? Well, I think in one of the commercials I was depicted as Hitler, and I would like to say that is false. I am not uh, Hitler, and I do not plan on selling uh, nuclear missiles to Iran. Uh, the second claim is in, I think uh, it was Bailey's commercial, there was a picture of me on a podium after a track meet, and I would like to say that was a sophomore year, and I'm a state champion in track. So that's all I have to say. Very good. And Riley, any claims made about you that you would like to address? Uh, I would just like to emphasize on my uh, bail for cell phones rule um, that this is an optional bail. Um, I'm not requiring students uh, to pay a fee to get their phones back. I am merely saying that if you want it back sooner or without the hassle of having your parents come in and get it, um, for example, a lot of kids uh, that live in Sioux Falls, uh, their parents work in Sioux Falls, um, that seems like an awful waste of both time, money, gas, a lot of things to have them drive all the way into Brandon uh, you know, to relieve your phone from the school. Um, instead of that, you could just pay a small fee and get it back. However, like Bailey said, uh, if you do not want to pay the fee or cannot afford it, that's not a problem, but you'll just have to wait. Okay. The next question, again to all of you, um, which former president of the United States are you the most like? And then, and then please explain why you are like that particular president. Uh, you know, what characteristics you have that they have, and so on. Also, you can't use the same president. So if one is taken, you're going to have to choose a different one. This time, we'll start with Bailey. I'm going to go with an answer that I'm sure other people may be thinking of, but I think it does apply. Um, many of us are familiar with Abraham Lincoln, and... <laughs> And I um, have learned about him in history class a lot. And I think that one of his most important qualities was that he was honest, from the cliche, honest Abe. And he was truthful. And it seemed that he cared a lot about people. And that's something that I want to get across, that I do care about other people. And I hope that shows. Very good. Riley, you can go next. Um, I'm not 100% sure on uh, what president I'd share identical uh, qualities with. However, uh, one president I've admired throughout the years is uh, Ronald Reagan. Um, he did a fantastic job with the uh, United States economy. Um, also with the military, uh, he had a um, kind of a, a uh, kind of a model that kind of went along with, um, you know, he's not just going to back down and let people kind of pick on the United States. Uh, when Ronald Reagan came into office, you know, he kind of set other countries straight and said, hey, you know, need to back off. And he got his way a lot more better, uh, a lot more forced approach. He wasn't really so-so um, with his answers. You know, he's very, a very straightforward president. Um, and that's, uh, I've really respected him a lot throughout the years. Very good. Cam. Uh, I think I'm most like former President Theodore Roosevelt. 
Uh, he's widely considered one of the best presidents of all time. He was elected to three terms, and they even made an amendment saying that you can't be elected to three terms because of that. Uh, I think I'm the most like him because he's a strong president and a great leader and well-liked, and I think uh, I share those same qualities. Did you say Teddy Roosevelt? Yeah. Teddy was elected twice. <laughs> Franklin, Franklin Roosevelt, my bad. He was elected four times, by the way. <laughs> I apologize. That's all right. I just thought for the social studies and the sleep teachers, um, <laughs> we might want to get that cleared up. Uh, and Kaylin, wow. which president would you, uh, who do you think are the most like? You are the most like, I'm sorry. Um, I think I um, share the same qualities of possibly um, George Washington. Just overall, his leadership, courage, strength, and um, um, I, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, suppose just the overall leadership that he's shown. Um, he's obviously one of the more common known presidents, and um, he's, I suppose, a, no, I don't know. But anyways, I, I think him. Okay. Cam, I should make sure that Teddy Roosevelt may have only been elected once. He may have taken over after McKinley died. So I may be incorrect, too. Sorry, Mr. Anderson. Um, one more question here. We'll make this related to the school itself. Of all the people in the school, including students, teachers, uh, coaches, uh, custodians, whoever, who do you admire the most and why? And let's uh, start with Cam this time. Uh, well, I think I admire most uh, Mr. Grody. He's really uh, showed me the love for government and uh, really helped me to pursue uh, the career that I want to go on, which is to be the next president of the school. And he's taught me my wonderful uh, facts about history. And that's all I have to say about that. Thank you. Again, can't use the same person more than once. Bailey, who do you admire the most in this school? I'm having a hard time deciding because there are so many teachers that I admire and look up to. Um, one teacher, one teacher that I have been looking up to for four years is Mrs. Kane. She's my oral interp coach. She is an English teacher, and she is there for me both in school and outside of school. And so she has taught me the importance of extracurriculars while also respecting my academics. And she allows us in oral interp to participate in anything we want to. So unlike some other activities, we can still be in band and art and all of those things. And she's very understanding, and I appreciate that a lot. Very good. Okay. Um, first of all, Mr. Grody, I want to thank you for asking this wonderful question. Um, um, my, what's the question again? Who in this school? <laughs> Teachers, students, administration, janitors, who do you admire the most in the school? All right, I admire, <laughs> um, I'd have to say my twin sister, Brooklyn, in the school, the student, as, um, as most because she overall um, motivates me every single day. We're together all the time, so um, it's just really easy to obviously be really close friends with her because we're best friends. And um, she's helped me show courage in the things that I do and um, and I guess just every aspect of my life. Very good. Riley. Um, I'm going to take a little different path uh, than the rest of these candidates. And I'm actually going to go with a group of uh, faculty members, and that's all the genders and the lunch ladies. Um, they really, is this funny? <laughs> um, I think. Uh, it's very hard to match the work ethic that uh, the genders have towards the school. Um, without them, I mean, uh, our school would really be a lot less sanitary place uh, to just to be in and to learn. Um, and I think they really work their tail off, and I'm really appreciative of everything they do. Um, being around after school extracurricular activities, uh, you know, after people leave, they're still there hours into the night even sometimes. And uh, I just have a lot of respect for them and what they do for our school. 
Very good. Our debate is just about done. The only thing we have remaining is our closing statements. This is the order that we will go in for our closing statements. We'll go Cam, Riley, Kaylin, and then followed by Bailey. Cam, you can give your closing statements, please. Well, I think as you can tell by this debate, uh, I'm a great choice, great candidate uh, to be voted president, and I would like you to encourage you to vote for me, and remember, yes, we can. Thank you. Riley. Um, fellow students of Brandon Valley, I, I do want to uh, Thank you, and I really appreciate you guys uh, watching this debate. Um, I hopefully this will, uh, uh, you know, either make up your mind on who you want for president, and hopefully the best one does get elected. So let's get riled up. Thank you, Kayla. Um, I just want to say, please vote for Kay. I can help you and be your friend too. So on November 26, put on some fresh kicks and vote Kaylin Smith because I can rhyme. That was just a myth. Very good. And Bailey. I believe that I, Bailey Kwanbeck, should be elected to be your next president because I'm always seeking to make a positive impact on this school, whether that be by holding leadership positions at BV or helping classmates with homework. We have a bright future and I want to lead us there. What's best for you? Vote for BQ. Very good. Thank you for participating in the debate.